Hi, thanks for joining me. It didn't seem right to me to play the normal jolly intro nor to wear the old mule hat today. If you're just here for the FPL stuff, that's fine. I'd try and remember to put a bookmark in here somewhere if I can work it out and you can skip ahead a couple of minutes. Otherwise, if you stick around, you get to hear me rambling on a bit about what I think about the current affairs. As you're no doubt aware, Queen Elizabeth died yesterday and that's led to games being postponed this weekend. We may also lose games next weekend, but that's down to policing. Now, I'm aware that online, especially on Twitter, because I've started using Twitter again recently, it's very split. The majority of people on there seem to be respectful, but there are a number of people that are posting um, unkind, perhaps, comments about what's happened. So background on where I stand, I grew up on the south coast between the cities of Chichester and Portsmouth. So Pompey was my nearest club. The first few games I went to were at Fratton Park. And in Portsmouth, that's the major naval base for the UK. So we're used to seeing a military presence. I lived in Pompey for a couple of years, popped over to France a couple of times. And when you leave the harbour, you get to see whatever boats are in. And it's an incredibly impressive sight. All this to say, because the South Coast has been involved in the military for hundreds of years like all the kings going back a long, long way. I would say there are generally strong feelings towards the armed forces and towards the Queen. Obviously, there's a lot of pageantry goes on when there were the D-Day celebrations, anniversaries at Pompey. That's always a big occasion, or was always a big occasion. The Queen would be there. Most people, certainly when I was growing up, would either have a relative that had been in the armed forces or was in the armed forces, or had ancestors that would have fought in the wars and died. So, and like I said, that's very closely linked to the royal family. The local pub where I grew up in the village, the landlord there, he'd have pictures up of various members of the royal family. And if somebody was in there saying something against the royalty, he'd kick them out and they'd be banned for a month. So the environment I grew up with was just very respectful to the royal family. Now, we did live just outside Leicester for a couple of years, and it did seem very different there. There were more people there that didn't care about royalty, very, seemed to be very much against the armed forces, and I would say they didn't understand our history anywhere near as much. So I am aware that across the country, different people, for various reasons, have a different view on this. My personal view is it's not unexpected that she died. We knew it was coming, but it's still a very sad occasion. All right then, let's let's get on with the football. So game week six, what a laugh that was, eh? I just bring my team up. All right, so for game week six, as you can see, I played a 4-3-3. So first I'll show all the players that got three points or less. That was 10 of them. <laughs> Diaz got three, Luis Diaz, the rest got two or one. So rather shocking. And then the only player that got a return was Haaland. He was my captain. No mule hat today, sorry. He got 18 points. So a very, very low scoring week for me. The bench was no good either. So I didn't do anything wrong with the bench. So I got 35 points. The game week rank was over eight and a half million, which is incredible. I don't know if I've had a a game week rank as impressive as that before. So overall, 374, I'm just outside the top million. I mean, it's fine. We've had six game weeks. It's not unusual for me to be like third or fourth million around Christmas time. So this is this is fine. I'm not worried at all. It's the second half of the season where I normally shoot up the ranks and I'm trying to finish in the top two and a half percent. So I still think that's perfectly doable. Now the transfer I made last week, this was expensive for me. I had Robertson and Tony and Tony was a placeholder. I did have Darwin. He got red carded in game week two. So I subbed him out knowing he was going to go down in price and put in a placeholder that was Tony. And it was always my intention when Darwin was back just to swap him around again, which is what I did. So I bought him Darwin, who I think got two points for Tony, who I think got 17. So that that was bad. Also last week, if you watched my video, you'll see that I was seriously considering bringing in Rashford. So I actually, by Getting rid of Tony and not bringing in Rashford, that cost me maybe 35 points or so. When something goes wrong in a game or anything in life, it's very useful to learn lessons. So the lesson here is, because I'd already decided Tony was just a placeholder, 
I didn't pay any mind to what's his fixture going to be. Had I thought about always home to Leeds, I think it was, perhaps I would have kept him. And nobody else was really bringing in Darwin. So had Darwin scored lots of points, I wouldn't have been much worse off. So I understand why I did it. Uh, but it was obviously a mistake and I didn't think things through properly. I did have a couple of transfers lined up for this week, but I hadn't made it yet. And now the game week's off. It's not relevant. And we don't know yet if there's going to be a game week eight. So I don't yet know what my transfers are going to be going forward. There is a couple of players I will intend to bring in, whether it's game week eight or nine, but I'll not be doing that yet. The Rashford situation I don't feel so bad about because I was umming and ahhing. And in the video I said, I'm not sure enough that Rashford would get four points more than Darwin. So I probably wouldn't take the hit and I didn't take the hit. So I don't feel so bad about Rashford. I'm not intending to bring Rashford in because I wanted to bring him for game week six and seven because of what those fixtures were. But I think the games, the next few games are better players for me to be picking. If game week eight goes ahead, Manchester United are home to Leeds, but there's a reasonable chance I would choose a different Man United player. And then I think they're away to Man City. If Martial comes back, we don't know for sure what's going to happen to Rashford. Perhaps Rashford was just a bit more lucky than normal when he played Arsenal. So uh, I'm, as things stand, I'm not decided. So there we are. That was my abysmal game week six. I hope that you all did a lot better than I did. But I'm still I'm still within uh, easy reaching point of the top two and a half percent. So like I said, it's really not a big deal. I've got time to sort the team out, so I'm not the least bit panicky about this. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.